Hello and welcome back. Now, on this channel, we are no strangers to witnessing how the unique level of scientific understanding possessed by a flat earther can lead them to make some extraordinary claims. The ultimate design of our flat earth, it's all there. Cannot be debunked. Fact. Now, these claims are, of course, in complete contrast to the claims made by people who practice non-made-up science. For example, one of my favourite quotes of all time comes from Richard Feynman, a very, very humble quote in which he expresses how difficult it is for him to explain the idea of magnetism without using analogies that are false and misleading. It's a beautiful quote. I can't explain that attraction in terms of anything else that's familiar to you. For example, if we said the magnets attract like as if they were connected by rubber bands, I would be cheating you because they're not connected by rubber bands. And secondly, if you were curious enough, you'd ask me why rubber bands tend to pull back together again, and I would end up explaining that in terms of electrical forces, which are the very things that I'm trying to use the rubber bands to explain, so I have cheated very badly, you see. Now, I do really love that quote, but here is where Flat Earth has the advantage. You see, when you're a Flat Earther, you are completely free of any kind of constraint or rule that says what you say has to make any kind of sense at all. So please sit back, relax, enjoy, and learn how magnetism really works on a flat earth. So here we have it. The center north vortex, hyperboloid in the magnetic field. Imagine a magnet there. Magnetic centripetal divergence. Divergence. It swings back around and up and behind. It's convergence coming back in, sending the flow up. So magnetism works. Yeah, and there you go. That's how magnetism works. Why do you have to make everything sound so complicated? Oh, for God's sake, watching that just makes me feel like someone's urinated in my eyes. Anyway, on this channel, you've seen me react countless times to ridiculous claims flat earthers make, like this one. And you thought calcium was a metal. Well, you are wrong, wrong, in our opinion. opinion. Or this one. If you were travelling from Scotland down to, uh, to London, on a ball, it would be downhill all the way. You wouldn't need to put any petrol in your car. You just use your brakes. And you've also seen me react to some pretty special comments like this. Hello, my name is Knowledge is Happiness, which, yeah, come to think of it, it's probably quite ironic and is the reason I'm angry all the time. Anyway, I just bob by to say, viruses do not exist, you flipping dumb brainwashed moron. Le Mayo. Bye bye, love you. And there's plenty more comments like that at the end of this video, but for now, let's remind ourselves of some of the other things we've seen. Well, we've seen flat earthers struggle with solid 100% proof of space travel, and we've seen how they tried to hand wave dismiss it while making the most ridiculous of comments. Okay. It's a balloon. I think we're no, in animation no, no, no. already. No. How come we can't see their funny faces? Yeah, we can anyone identify that aerodynamic material, that, that tinfoil? that's not flapping in the wind, that's not exploding from outer space. Those milk crates are steering it. They're using those to steer it. Why he thinks a piece of tinfoil should explode in space, uh, I've no idea, but moving on. We've also seen flat earthers struggle with the most basic aspects of mathematics and numeracy, as we saw when the cast of Shed Rage High tried out play school for the day. Ladies and gentlemen, the staff of Shed Rage High visit play school. Boy. What is going on? Who should come along then? I don't know. The Spoon Sisters. Oh. oh. Hello, hello. Hello. Mash, 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 mash. The best show ever. So we'll count to five and you can count with her. Let's we'll see if the lid comes back. Ready? One. One. Two. Two. Three. Three. Four. 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 I don't really know what I'm doing. Four. Thirteen and a half. And that is the end of the story. But one thing we haven't seen on this channel yet is a Flat Earther reacting live to another Flat Earther's video. Will they be able to see what the rest of us see, or will they just swallow it up whole because it's a little bit easier than actually thinking for yourself? Well, here we're going to see a Flat Earther react to a gravity debunking experiment. And he seems quite excited. Yo, yo. Here we go. Check this out. 
Well, we will check this out, but having seen the video already, I can tell you that what we're about to check out is less of a scientific experiment and more of a, a pastime for toddlers in daycare. Surely nobody can take this seriously. This is a genius experiment. <sighs> Give me a minute. Now, just like the rest of the experiment, the start of it is pretty simple, and we see somebody weighing something. And he's doing some sign language. Something there, something about 400, I guess. I think he's saying 400 grams. This is absolutely fantastic. What you're seeing is he weighed the rock, and then put it in water and weighed it. And it weighed less because of the buoyant force. Yeah, and so far, of course, our flat earther is actually correct. Yeah, he is, and I think we all know that when we submerge something in a fluid, that object pushes some of the fluid out the way, and the rest of the fluid pushes back. Now, the size of that buoyant force is going to be dependent on what volume of fluid we've had to displace in the first place, and the density of the fluid itself. Then it's just a case of simply subtracting this force from the weight of the object, and that's what we would expect to see on a set of weighing scales. And in the real world, of course, we all know that divers, for example, have to wear weighted belts to counteract this buoyant force so that they can actually, well, you know, dive. So after seeing that, you might be thinking that this flat earther did indeed spot what the rest of us see when we look at an experiment like that. You might be thinking that the flat earther understands buoyancy and he understands that's why the rock seemed to weigh less underwater. You might be thinking that the flat earther was in fact correct. No. And it weighed less because of the buoyant force. It should weigh the same or even more. The buoyant force, this disproves, immediately disproves gravity, okay? That's right. Now, where you and I might see predictable physics in action, our flat earth friend sees something that debunks gravity and the entirety of physics as we understand it. And what's worse is, in this video, when I was researching it to try and debunk him, I actually found that he taught me something. And you'll find out what that is later on, but for now, I'm beginning to understand what this guy meant when he said this. Even the dumbest person, stupidest person, most ignorant person out there definitely knows something that I don't know. Now we will find out what it was I learned from that flat earther later on in this video, but for now, we're going to have to stop and we're going to have to listen to the logical, coherent and scientific argument that he puts forward to tell us why this experiment debunks gravity. It's only 150 grams now. The buoyant force, this disproves, immediately disproves gravity, okay? The fact that this weighs less than water proves gravity is a crock of shit. It's dense force and buoyant force, they're electromagnetic properties. It's duality. You can't just have, oh, it's gravity. No, you have to have like a, a, a dense and a buoyant a, a duality, a, a, a light and a day. And there you go, it's simple. It's all explained by contrast. Contrast such as light, and, and day. Now, I wasn't so sure, so I decided to get my own weighing scales out and show our guy a trick or two. Okay, so here are my spring scales, and outside of the water, this tube of toothpaste has a mass of about 0.2 kilograms. Let's see how that's going to work underwater, shall we? But as the top of my weighing scales floated away in the water, I realised that I might not be the right man for this job. So I decided to call in the big guns. So with that in mind, please welcome One Minute Debunk. Now I've linked his channel in the description and it's well worth checking out. All his videos are like this, short, to the point, One Minute Debunks. A spring scale is sensitive to its environmental conditions. A balanced scale is not. For example, Wait, what am I doing with my life? Of course 500 grams is the same as 500 grams. It's 500 grams. It doesn't matter if it's underwater or up a mountain. Physical objects are made of matter, or atoms, which have a property called mass. Casually, people refer to this as weight. This is a fundamental and well-understood property of everything. All inventions since the dawn of civilization are contingent on this basic understanding of stuff. And everything works. How did anyone design and build an aircraft carrier if humanity has misunderstood the basic properties of the materials used to build it? How are there working submarines? Or, you know, working spring scales? 
One Minute Debunk, thank you very much. And again, I've linked his channel in the description, well worth checking out. But I did say before that segment that I actually learned something from this flat earther. And here's what I learned. Depth makes no difference to the weight of the rock. So one of the results from this experiment that makes our flat earther not believe in gravity is the fact that the reading on the weighing scale and therefore the buoyant force on the rock didn't change dependent on the depth of the weighing scale in the bucket. Now, my gut instinct was to jump all over that and tell him how shallow the bucket was and to tell him that if he had a bucket that was deep enough and he took those weighing scales down deep enough, we would see an increase in buoyant force and we would see a reduced perceived weight on the rock. That's what I was going to tell him. Now, my first instinct when I heard that was that buoyant force should increase as we go deeper into the water. And I said that because my intuition told me that the deeper we go in the water, the higher the pressure, and therefore those water particles might be pushed just that little bit closer together, increasing the density. Now, this would mean that the buoyant force would be greater because even though the volume of displaced water is the same, that water has a higher density. But of course, liquids are pretty difficult to compress, and this study from the Open University shows us that once we get past the surface of a large body of water, where most of the temperature change happens, the density of water actually remains pretty constant, meaning the buoyant force and perceived weight shouldn't change. And there we go, like a, a broken clock twice a day, you actually managed to say something that was correct, and I was wrong, and I'm happy to admit it too. Um, what do you think of that? Great job, man. Thanks, and I'm sure that the explanation I just gave was exactly what you were thinking when you made your comment. Uh, anyway, so there we have it, another Flat Earther reacts to a video where gravity is debunked, but this time using a bucket. Chatbox travels. Chat. Box. Travel. Space comma. So today's first example of a, a well thought out, rational and well articulated scientific argument from a flat earther comes from somebody who's disappointed that t-shirts don't prove the shape of the earth. Hello, my name's Fianjit Wanamaki and I'm here to tell you that, you know what, I gave physics and science a go and I even learned how to spell them, but ultimately it just weren't for me, you know, too much work and stuff. But I also want to tell you that your stupid t-shirt doesn't convince me that I spend my life upside down hanging from the bottom of a bowl, so there we go. Oh, also, check out my entry for the most ironic comment on the internet award of the year. Ready? I ain't even a flat earther, I'm a human being with common sense. Now I'll admit that this next comment is not a comment I ever thought I'd have to address. It was taken from a video in which I included this prank call with Kent Hovind. I'll just call him. There we go. Hang on. There. Okay. Hello? Conspiracy cat. Hey Kent, how you doing? You alright? Pussy. So, did you just call me a pussy? Yeah. Right. Anything else? Listen carefully, Mr. Plotting Pussy. Go on. You're going to be dead. I'm going to go now, Ken. <laughs> See you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> now, in all honesty, it's never actually crossed my mind before that when I put little skits like that into videos, that there might actually be some people out there who genuinely think I'm trying to pass them off as real. But I might be wrong. Hello, my name's No Shoes On. Check this out, it's brilliant. Hey, Baldy, you don't exactly have a bunch of well-educated readers here. I know, I said readers, and you're a YouTuber. I should have said viewers. But when do I ever think things through? It doesn't matter, just let the words come out. Like this next bit here. Why don't you at least be honest and tell everyone that you're not really debating, Kent? It's all a lie to get your followers to pay your bar tab. Try being a little honest. Now, there is a word out there for people who can't tell the difference between what's actually true and completely made up stories, and that word is, of course, creationists. But for those people out there, I will say that that little skit with Kent Hovind didn't actually happen. I did edit it together to make him look a little bit silly. Unlike this next clip, which did happen, which was from our debate, where Kent Hovind made himself look silly by being a self-proclaimed evolution expert who couldn't define the simple term, allele frequency. All living organisms, man has 46, different animals have different numbers of chromosomes, are unbelievably complicated, like a long twisted ladder. The, the rungs of the ladder would be the genes. These can have uh, the alleles, the, as a variant of a gene. These things can vary from person to person. So it, I'd have to do some refreshing, but the, the twisted ladder, the long twisted chromosome ladder, has the rungs across it, the uh, genes, there can be frequency differences between different people. 
you may have some insertions like an ERV. Let's do a whole debate just on that at another time. And I'll go, I don't have any slides ready for that right now. But are you saying that because there are frequency changes, changes in the frequency of the alleles of the genes in the DNA, that is proof that we all came from a rock? Is that, is that what you're trying to lead to? And now we move on to the topic of Flat Earth Johnnies. And no, that is not some kind of innuendo. I have a history on my channel of Flat Earthers with the name Johnny seriously struggling to string more than one word together in a sentence. Now, to be fair to them, there are times when they do use just one word and it kind of makes sense. Hello, just me, Johnny. I just bob by to call you a liar. Uh, anyway, love you. Bye bye. But when it comes to actually stringing multiple words together to formulate a question, for example, it all starts to fall apart. Formulating a question, I can formulate a question, you ready? Where the curve is? Oh, oh hang on, give me a minute. And it doesn't get any better for them either when they start to try and correct me on science. Like this comment here that was taken from a video in which I talked extensively about the Coriolis effect. Yeah, well I got you sus baldy cats, you want to talk about Coriolis? Well I've got one thing to say to you, and that's you don't know C Coriolis. Oh no. And then just when you think they've actually got it together and they're going to make it through a comment without making a massive mistake, they let themselves down on the very last word. Oh, please, Baldy Cat, stop talking about space. We all know it's fake. In fact, here, have this. Cut the crap because space is f... 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 fact. So that's this week's Flat Earth Johnny and next time out we'll take a look at the ups and downs of the grammar of this guy. Hello, it's me, Johnny5, and I'm here to tell you that I'm the worst Johnny in the comment section, so, so to speak. Uh, it is fact that the Earth is flat. Katz himself proves that the Earth is flat, yep. Check this out, right? By his semicolon. Lack of physical evidence for the globe, comma, and um, I'm going to sign off with a H. Yeah. Now I often get asked how I do my research for my videos and just like any other YouTuber the internet is my bible of knowledge but researching for today's video was actually quite difficult. The question of why things weigh more underwater wasn't an easy one to answer especially because they don't. So here's a little tribute to some of the internet heroes out there that helped me out. Thank you. Conspiracy Cats. What's up? Interesting name. Cute little logo. Thanks very much. I've got a question for you. Why do things weigh more underwater. Conspiracy cats? Uh, we talk about body armor here, generally speaking, Mr. Conspiracy Cats. Oh, you only talk about body armor? Oh, how about this then? Why does body armor weigh more under... <laughs> no, I'm serious. Some guy on the internet weighed a rock and said it should weigh more underwater. Why? Uh, I don't think things weigh more underwater. Oh, well, you're no help then, are you? I wonder who else is about. Good morning to Conspiracy Cats. I like the name of that channel. Conspiracy Cats, a very good morning to you. Um, why do things weigh more underwater? I don't know, do they? You know I'm really not sure anymore. Anyway, this asshole here says they should weigh less because of buoyancy. What's buoyancy? The water takes the weight off. It's wonderful. Oh, okay, whatever floats your boat. Anyway, one last try. Why do things weigh more underwater? Okay, so that is a physics question and I haven't done physics in about four years. It's alright, no one minds if you don't really know what you're talking about. Doesn't seem to bother this guy. But the term that you're confusing, weight and mass, are completely different. Uh, so the mass of an object never change, but the weight of something is dependent on a few variables, especially where that object is. So if it's underwater, there's other forces acting on it, such as buoyancy and, you know, that like ties into Archimedes' principle and then you have density. So I wouldn't say that an object weighs more underwater. It's oh, you know what? I think I'll just stop you right there because I actually feel quite bad for wasting your time now. It's only a joke. No problem. Thank you for asking the question.